Greetings, MBAP 518 online MBA students in the International Business Course. This is Dr. Jaros with a video explanation for how I graded exam number three. Let's look at question number one. What are the obstacles to companies meeting the needs of the global poor? Well, there are a number of obstacles that uh, companies face. Some obstacles relate to infrastructure. Many poor company, countries, many poor countries lack infrastructure, meaning they lack uh, transportation systems, they lack uh, power systems, and they lack other forms of in infrastructure like water and sewage, uh, and that makes conducting business difficult. Also, in many cases, poor countries are characterized by corruption. Um, there's corruption in every country. Here in the USA, we have co corruption, but corruption particularly uh, seems to be very widespread in poor countries, and that is an issue that has to be addressed. Maybe most importantly, though, um, is the attitude of the leaders of foreign businesses. Um, there's a lot of evidence that suggests, and this is outlined in the article, that many times CEOs of foreign companies uh, falsely believe that money cannot be made in poor countries, that poor people lack the buying power to uh, make selling products in their countries profitable. And that's not the case. In, ma in many cases, that's not the case. So infrastructure, corruption, and the mindset of CEOs in, of foreign countries are the major factors that make conducting business or major obstacles to companies meeting the needs of the global poor. All right, let's look at question number two. All right, question number two asks, if I'm a manager at Procter & Gamble and I am responsible for the global direction of marketing, what kind of management role am I playing? More generally, what are the responsibilities of this kind of manager in a global firm? Well, if you are the global, if you're responsible for the global direction of marketing, marketing is a functional area within business. So you are a worldwide functional manager. That is the role that you are providing or the role that you are playing. The three specific activities associated with being a worldwide functional manager are being a worldwide scanner of information to get information related to marketing into the company so it can be utilized in strategy making. Innovation champion is number two meaning it's your job to champion new innovations in marketing techniques to help the company sell its product more effectively, and a disseminator of best practices for the marketing function, making sure that good ideas that are developed in marketing in one part of the company are disseminated throughout the rest of the company. So you are a worldwide functional manager, and the three key roles are worldwide scanner, innovation champion, and advocate for best practices. What about question number three? Explain what successes and failures Levendary Cafe experienced in the Chinese market. Well, Levendary experienced both successes and failures in China. On the success side, uh, Mr. Chen, who was the leader of the effort in China, was able to develop a, a uh, franchise system, or excuse me, not a franchise system. He was quickly able to develop 23 restaurants at various locations within China. He was able to get these restaurants up and running, and he was able to market them successfully to local customers. Chen was also able to uh, modify or adopt the product offerings that the restaurants were, were uh, offering to consumers so as to better cater to local tastes and preferences. So the bottom line here is that um, Chen's job was to establish a business for Levendary in China, and within a very short period of time, Levendary was able to open 23 restaurants in various Chinese markets, and that was a success. But on the other hand, uh, Chen was not able to do so in a very profitable manner. The modifications that he made 
to the menu and to the decor and to the layout of the restaurants prevented the company from developing a brand feel to those locations. Each location uh, seemed to be almost like a separate business rather than part of a coherent, cohesive uh, restaurant chain. Also, Chen was not able to establish sound accounting practices, and therefore the financial reports that he generated for headquarters back in the USA were not sufficient to meet government regulatory requirements, particularly the requirements of the IRS. And that was a major problem or major flaw with the Chinese operations. All right, let's look at question number four. When a foreign firm and a domestic firm form a joint venture, how important is the foreign firm's percentage of ownership in that venture? Explain. Well, the article I had you read argued that a foreign firm should own about 30 to 40 percent of the equity in the joint venture. Because if the foreign firm owns about 30 to 40 percent of the equity, um, then the joint venture has a very good chance of surviving and thriving. If a foreign firm owns more than 30 to 40 percent, it really doesn't matter to the survival rate of the joint venture. But if the firm earns or the, if the foreign firm owns less than 30 to 40 percent of the joint venture, then the mortality rate, the odds that the joint venture will fail, go way up. And this is explained in terms of management interest and effort. If a foreign firm only owns a small percentage of the joint venture, then there's a good chance that the management of the foreign firm will not regard the joint venture as being very important and therefore not invest enough resources or time and energy into making the joint venture uh, successful. But if they own a more substantial stake, then they will care more about it and do a better job of investing the necessary resources. Okay, that's my video explanation for how the exams were graded. I hope everyone had a good semester.